to such a degree that now, if you've been in this place, I don't know if all of you have been there, but I'm saying I long for you to be there, and I long to be in these places myself where I'm stealing away any chance I can to read his word, to get into his presence, pray to God, hear from God. You carry the word with you, you know, even when you're driving, it's on your seat, like in the past, you're, at red lights, you're trying to suck in a verse, and someone's like laying on the horn because it turned around, oh, oh, you're, I'm sorry, praise the Lord, you know, here you're, and you start trying to go again, just because you're so hungry to hear from him. If this is a mystery to you, I'm saying this can be a reality for you. I know this, the more I pray, the more I want to pray. But first and foremost, I have to find the time, you know, at the risk of sounding mystical, you know, um, you've got to get creative to set up that sacred space, even if it's just a short moment. Like when I was teaching back in Philadelphia, I worked in the church and the school, and sometimes there'd be all kinds of things that were happening in the school, right? Phone, Phone calls about suicide or domestics and all, and then I had to walk into a classroom and teach kids. And I had this moment, and it was when I touched the doorknob, I would take a deep breath, and I would pray what I call a breathe prayer. It only takes one breath, and I'd say, thou knowest. Because I remember reading the scriptures, and I was going through the Psalms, and I saw how many times it says, thou knowest. The Lord, hey, the Lord knows a lot of stuff. And like it was my way, I only had time for two words. But when I said those two words, thou knowest, what I meant was, you know I'm not ready. You know my heart's filled with anxiety. You know mentally I'm still back in that office on that traumatic phone call, and now I gotta get in front of these seventh graders who have their own traumas that they're one gonna talk about as we go through this, and I don't feel prepared, but you know. And I take that deep breath, and I would turn that doorknob and step into that threshold with a moment of prayer before I entered into that space. And I'm trying to say to you, this is what it looks like for me to pray without ceasing. It could be the three minutes, watch this. It could be the three minutes that you're closing down your desk. I remember in Philadelphia, more or less in Ocean City, when we were in the Crown Bank, my office was in there. It would take me, I don't know how long it takes you, about three minutes to shut down my day. I'd have to shut down my computer, I'd close my Bible, I'd put my books I was resourcing back on the shelf, and that three minutes I prayed, as I shut down, I actually made it a point to take that time to be praying in those three minutes as I was closing down my desk. Because it's easy to just go, I gotta shut it down, and you know what, you know what I'm usually doing? I'm thinking of the next thing I gotta get to. Like Tarzan swinging on a, on a vine. I'm coming out of the church office thinking about what I gotta do with the basketball game I gotta get to. And God's like, slow down, man. I've got things I wanna share with you. I've got things I wanna say to you, like life transforming thoughts, yet you're so busy, you're not really taking the time to hear me. It's that drive to work when you turn off all the tech and you just talk to God. It's that, it, it's, it's, that, it's that time when you're, here's another one for you. Maybe it's when you're, you know, when your tea bag is steeping, usually takes about three to four minutes. Why not say, instead of trying to get something else done, why my tea bag's steeping? Uh, like, slow down, sit down while the tea bag is steeping and turn that moment into a meditation. Turn that moment into prayer right there.